Hey guys, it's 60% Cat. I'm showing a little bit of my process of making the game I'm working on, Observatu. I make my images in Illustrator, and right now they're... I could finish off with these images, but I'm I'm hoping I'm going to improve on them. But either way, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the final design of like Lily and the, main, and the other characters. I was reiterating how I was going to make her in a very simplified way or a more detailed way, and I kind of went somewhere in between, a little bit closer to the simple way, but I'm pretty happy with it. I feel like I can express a lot of emotions. I also want the view to be pretty well zoomed out, so you can't... too much detail. I like simplicity, just the, the feel of it. But the game has to be more detailed than it is now, at least with definitely more colors, and ideally shading, or at least some way to might generate actively color underneath the characters or the outlines of these characters. So that's just Illustrator. I'm going to show you some of the code. So first, how we get the resources in here, like the images. So either way, if you're familiar with any kind of coding, even if you're not, I'm going to just explain things in a very kind of general way, just to give you just an idea of what it's like. Uh, start out to get these images in this game. Well, first off, I'm basically using what you would see in a web page, JavaScript, the coding of a regular web page. And you can make games with this. So my game runs in just a browser. I open up an HTML file. And within HTML is the other coding, CSS, which is more for formatting, and JavaScript, which you can do a lot with. A lot of, you can code a whole game or whatever. So I just, right now I just have it on my computer, but I could also host it on a web page. And people, anybody with, a lot of different kinds of browsers, a lot of different kind of devices can access this game. And I can upload it really fast. Another advantage of developing on a JavaScript or using HTML and all that is that you could test it really quickly, really easily. I love it. I'm obsessed with JavaScript. But I don't know how to have a lot of range of languages. I also just know Objective C. Um, really, that's pretty much it, honestly. But, anyways. We start this, I gotta load all these variables, but I wanna load them before I start the game. So I have to do things in a little bit of a different way, maybe if I were to do it in a different way. So first I just upload these images into an array. And all an array is just a list of things, just a bunch of things. And you use arrays a lot, because you need to list, it's just a way to group things, really, if you think about it. So I have all, these are just the reference to where the files are, the image files are. And then I also have to attach them to a variable I use within the program. Because I also give them some other traits as well. Or it's just easier to reference them instead of listing them all out. And then they'll also be loaded once instead of loading a bunch of times. And so these are all just different expressions mostly of these different characters. And so this is the real meat of the game right now. or what's gonna really drive the whole game it's like the rails of the train or something I don't know I don't know what to call it so basically it's a beat in terms of like a scene like you think like acting that's how I learned was every little action happens in a beat or even every intention follows along that's just like the individual beats you can also think of music I guess that works too but anyways, it generally is just a character doing an action, is what I'm using it for. And that's to sequence these actions, so they happen one after another at a certain amount of time, in a certain condition. So, so programming is just all about your methods or functions, whatever you want to call them. And a function always is, uh, it's called something, so I'm calling it a beat. And these are parameters that I'm going to send to this function to do to to set it up so when I do a beat let's, let's find a beat so this is where like this real script is and so a beat for me so this is just make it up you have to make shit up in programming right so I have to create up a beat it's a way to process these things sequentially these different actions it's basically like a scene playing out beat by beat because each thing needs a separate action to happen for example a lot of these you can see the character, so in the first parameter you pass is which character is doing this action. And then the second is what action it is. So if it's something simple like wait, I don't even need to send any more parameters to that beat. 
that's enough. So this is just gonna, as this script plays out sequentially, it's gonna first wait, then next it's gonna do this. It's gonna have Lily say this text. This third parameter is the data. So character, in, in this little function I write it as character, doing, and then the data. The data could be text. I also have a locate like a an X and Y location if they're walking somewhere. Um, and then also if you the minimum you only need to pass is these two. You can also pass a third, but if you want even more, you can also give them an expression to do while they're doing that beat, and then after the beat is done, a finished expression. I gave this for a unique function. But it's not really. Oh, I have it in here. It's not really necessary. If I need, if you needed an additional function just to do something that you you wanted to do doing, but also, then I could do that. So it's a really nice way to just have these actions in a sequential way and make it really easy to write for me and edit. So it just looks like a big line of inputs. This thing happens after this, this happens after that. The only things that happen simultaneously is if you have these, so, so for example I have this script, Lily Arrives, which follows Lily starting on the ship and then walking to the warehouse. Essentially right now that's all it is. And that's all this. A different whole script going on is the Joyce's routine. And this follows Joyce the rabbit starting in her apartment, getting ready, and then going to the restaurant for her job. And so this is happening simultaneously. And I can show you a little bit of what actually is running this. I call it my action manager. When you do programming, you have to name a lot of things. So I call these beats. I have an action manager that processes these beats. So I tell it to process each, each one. And you can tell it later to process one within this script to tell it to. So we'll find where that is and what it does. So action manager here. So just by itself it doesn't do anything, but it itself has this function called process. And when you do that, you need to send it a scene of a list of scenes. So those were those two arrays that I would send it before. And then this will basically time it out for the next one. This is right here as if it's walking and it needs to wait to arrive somewhere. It'll just keep delaying the scene until, or d it'll keep adding beats or not, not resolve the beat until they arrive. So it's a way to wait until something physically happens. And yeah, this is what it looks like. This is this, I'm not going to go through all of it. But yeah, there's my, uh, my scene manager and how I import images. I hope that was interesting. Thanks a lot.